So I've noticed in the forums lately that there's still a lot of people that are struggling to get quality prints due to under and over extrusion. So I thought I'd share the method that I use. So I did a fair bit of research and testing on east depths and flow calibration and as you can see i did the various tests where they print hollow cubes they measure the thickness of the walls etc and so i came up with my own method for being able to guide you to get fantastic results and honestly right here is an example of probably the best uh, calibration cube i ever printed so the letters are very sharp and crisp. There's no ghosting. The corners are very, very crisp. I mean, the thing looks beautiful and fantastic. Usually the thing that I find that comes out the worst is the top layer. And so, although you can see some lines, this thing is really, really smooth. The smoothest cube I've ever printed. So if you want to understand how it is that I came about doing this, stick around and I'll walk you through. So just a quick note that this is where I started off on the left here, where my east steps were not calibrated, I was at 100% flow, and I was getting a great finish. I mean, it feels fantastic on the surface here, but the strength is not the same as having your east steps and your flow calibrated correctly. So in my right hand here, I have the, uh, the same brim over there. And it's actually, it's quite easy for me to be able to stick my fingernail through there, even though it feels fantastic. And I know you can't measure the pressure of my thumbnail, but it is much easier to put your thumbnail through that than it is through this one. You see, it, it requires more pressure. There's more strength in this because the E-steps are calibrated properly and the flow is calibrated properly. So just a brief explanation of E-steps versus flow before I go into the little demo that I've prepared. So the E-steps is about when you ask for 100 millimeters of filament, do you actually get it? So if you're not getting enough, you're going to end up with results where you're under extruded. And if you're getting too much, you're going to get results of where you're over extruded. And if the tip of my screwdriver is the nozzle, it's very important that we're actually laying down the right amount of filament as the uh, nozzle moves forward. The same holds true for the flow, but the flow is about the rate of filament that the stepper motor is delivering as we're moving the nozzle forward, creating uh, a line of filament. So does it really matter which one you calibrate first, uh, the E-steps or the flow? And in my opinion, it is, it's very important which one you calibrate first, and I'll explain why. So my opinion is that it's important for you to calibrate the E-steps first before you go and calibrate the flow. If you don't know how many millimeters of filament that you're moving per step, then it'll be a bear to try to calibrate the E-steps after calibrating the flow. There's actually a couple of steps that are in between that are very important in my opinion. So the very, very first thing that you want to do if you're having troubles printing is you want to calibrate the E-steps. And I have a video on how to do that with Cura. The next thing that you want to do is you want to learn how to set your Z offset accurately after you've calibrated your e-steps that's very very important before you go trying to calibrate your flow because you want to make sure that you're able to make the filament adhere to the bed before you go trying to calibrate the flow now you're going to find a lot of videos online where they talk about measuring the wall thickness in order to be able to calibrate the flow and measuring the size of the cube uh, during that time but honestly, I don't think that that is the best approach because if you go trying to calibrate the flow to a measurement, the thickness of this wall, you can end up calibrating to the degree where you're going to make the structure very, very weak. And as you saw, I've tested a lot of cubes uh, to try to calibrate the flow. So the method that I came up with is this little test pattern that you see in front of you. And so 
what I've done is I've got this front row is about the flow and the back two corners here are about the calibrated E steps. It can be confusing looking at your models trying to figure out why am I under extruding or why am I over extruding because the symptoms can be very very similar and that's why to me it's important that you calibrate the e-steps first so if you look here this uh, this brim okay it's very very smooth the center is, is quite smooth uh, this is the one that is calibrated accurately for e-steps and flow on the upper left over here you're going to see that this is the E steps where there are too few steps. So although you can't see it uh, in this image, what you can end up having it look like is going to be uh, something like this. And I'm just putting a piece of white paper to make sure that you can see that this is exaggerated under extrusion. So you can see the connectivity between the layers of filament that are uh, put down. They don't adhere well together. You can see in between so that is a symptom of under extruding because of low E steps. And so uh, once uh, this brim is lifted here, you would see symptoms like that. So the same thing will be true if you are not delivering the correct flow. So this is exaggerated, uh, having reduced the flow significantly. And although you may not see it on camera, it looks almost identical to this. So this is very, very smooth, but it'll be weak. It'll be easy to break, just like you see me splitting up these strands on this brim, this test piece here. If you come over to the right here, where I have exaggerated the over extrusion, it's very, very rough. The center is rough. You can probably hear my fingernail going across it. And then again, the same thing is here. If you're over, if the flow is too high, but your E steps are correct, you're gonna end up with a very, very rough surface. So my recommendation is that once you have your E steps set, now you're gonna go in and you're gonna start to play with, with the flow. Right here, I would say, is an actually an excellent uh, brim where I've got the E steps calibrated correctly and I've got the flow set up. So this is 100% flow. It just happened to work out that this is pretty good because I've played just below and just above. And so this is with the E steps correct, just above and just below. And it feels very, very similar. It's just a little bit scratchy because there's excess filament that is uh, that ends up getting pushed up because of the nozzle having to clear a path through it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So once you've got it to the point where you have your E steps are calibrated correctly and you got your flow established, that's when I would start going to printing these cubes and verifying these cubes. So I found that my cubes are very, very accurate. I mean, we're talking about being off by 0 0.0 and then a, a value in uh, millimeters. So uh, with the E steps set up correctly, and then the flow is set up correctly where it's flat, you're not gonna be uh, risking the integrity, the strength of what it is that you're printing. Then you start to print the cubes and you measure them. If you find that your cubes are off after you have done this, that's when you're gonna start looking at calibrating the steps of the uh, X, Y, and Z axis. So let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comments below. In the meantime, I've placed the link to two videos. One is for being able to calibrate your E-steps using Cura. The other one is how to be able to set your Z offset. So thanks for watching and happy printing.